Have you ever faced a problem and tried to solve it by all means, but eventually it returns back repeatedly? This phenomenon usually happens in our personal lives and in the organizations we run or work at. To explain this phenomenon, it is important to understand what the meaning of problem is. Oxford Learner's Dictionary defines it as a thing that is difficult to deal with or to understand. Also defined as a matter or situation regarded as unwelcome or harmful and needing to be dealt with and overcome. We can summarize those definitions into this simple one, a gap between what is desired and what is happening. From the mentioned definitions, we can determine the characteristics of problems. They are unwelcome or harmful. They need to be dealt with or overcome. They are difficult to deal with or to understand. Managers deal with this dilemma by an action called shifting the burden. It is an action of applying solutions to mitigate the effect of the problem. However, we cannot consider it a problem-solving decision. It rather be considered a symptomatic solution. The following example will help you to understand what symptomatic solutions are. In medicine, if someone has pain in his arm, the doctor cannot treat this pain by a painkiller because in this case, he would treat the effect of something deeper which caused this pain. Painkiller might reduce or stop the pain for some time, but it will return eventually. In this case, the doctor needs to make more diagnosis and scan the arm because it might be broken. Then treating a broken arm is very different than giving the patient a painkiller. Giving the right treatment to the broken arm is a fundamental solution. The same thing applies on management. When we have a problem, we only see the symptoms of it. In another term, the superficial layer. We conclude the existence of the problem by observing the symptoms. Applying symptomatic solutions to solve the problem will probably make it return over and over again, and we will have a snowball effect which might lead to a disaster. Digging deeper into the problem will let us reach the fundamental layer and give us better understanding of it to find the root cause so we can apply fundamental solutions. Root Cause Analysis, or RCA, is a sequence of procedures organizations apply for better understanding of the problem and its causes, in addition to find alternatives and test them in order to select the optimum one and execute it to solve a problem fundamentally. Types of causes can be physical, human, or organizational. RCA investigates the three types of causes to find the root cause that led to the problem. For example, a courier company received a late delivery complaint. They may solve a problem by making the delivery for free. However, this would be a symptomatic solution or a quick fix to deal with a critical situation. Still and all, they need to apply RCA in order to prevent this problem from happening again. Physical cause. The delivery was late because the car broke down. Human cause. The delivery man was incompetent due to lack of training. Organizational cause. Insufficient workforce due to absence of needs analysis system. RCA have to determine the root cause of the problem in order to apply a fundamental solution. Now you can understand and compare between the symptomatic solution and the fundamental solution. RCA has five main steps. Each step represents a procedure to identify the problem and solve it. In each step, you need to ask the right question. Step one. Define the problem. What is happening? What are the symptoms? Step two, collect data. 
What evidence do we have for the problem? For how long does the problem exist? How does the problem affect the system? Step 3. Identify possible casual factors. Where is the gap and how big it is? What circumstances led to the problem? Step 4. Identify the root causes. What is the real reason that led to the problem? Step 5. Recommend and implement solutions. What measures to be taken to prevent the problem from happening again? How to implement the solution? Who will be responsible for the implementation? What are the pros and cons of implementing the solution? After that, you need to test the solution through a feedback that might lead you to either continue or return to any of the previous steps for more details.